Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. If you missed part one, check it out here and let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Okay, so I wanted to bring you guys over to my table because I wanted to show you guys exactly um, the process that I would use for making this dress if I were making this dress for a customer. Um, so this is what I would do after we've already decide, decided on our design. Excuse my sketch, I know it's not the best. I'm not a fashion illustrator or anything like that. Um, but pretty much this is going to be a um, fitted gown up underneath that has um, a slight mermaid um, that has a slight mermaid shape up underneath here because I want to be able to when this when the overlay not the overlay when the uh, satin skirt is being it's taken off like after the ceremony I want it to still have shape to it I don't want it to be like a whole sheath gown because I want it to be like, you know, you wear this as almost like a ball gown for your ceremony and then you take the detachable skirt off and then now it's a gown for your reception. So it is going to have an overlay of lace um, that has the kind of scalloped edge up here. It's going to be off the shoulder with long sleeves. Um, yeah, so this is my sketch. And once I have my sketch, what I do is I break it down. And I break it down for not only materials, but I like to break it down for uh, my construction method as well. Because if you don't plan out and you're just kind of shooting by the wayside, then um, you're gonna run into a lot of issues when it comes to construction. So I like to go ahead and break it down and figure out how I'm going to put this together. So let's just pretend like the, um, satin overskirt is not on here so let's worry about the main dress so the main dress consists of an overlay a satin layer a structure inside and then a lining right so our overlay is going to have a waist seam here the top um, part with the long sleeves the bodice part is going to be constructed with darts so it's going to be a bodice that is constructed with darts here so that I can keep this nice um, this nice applique here and it's also going to have set in sleeves and it's going to be separate. The side seams are going to be separate from our satin layer up underneath. The bottom is going to be constructed with um, princess seams and over the parts that I run into some of the applique areas, I'm going to construct those with applique seams so that you can't uh, see the seams there. The layer up underneath that will be our structure corset layer. Now I'm going to um, build off the original pattern that we have here to create a corset. And uh, I'm gonna create a corset by adding more seams in it basically. So this would be just the, your regular princess seams but when you were creating the corset for it, I'm going to add a center front seam, keep our princess seam, and then another seam on the side of the bust area to support the side of the bust. I'm also going to take about two inches from our total circumference as waist reduction for our front and back. Our back is going to have um, our regular princess seam and also another seam. Um, so there's going to be uh, pretty much three panels here in the back and it's going to have grommets and have some lacing. And we're gonna to try to make this as flat as possible because the main dress needs to zip up over, over top of it. I'm planning on attaching this layer, the structural layer only at the neckline so that I can um, pull this as tight as possible and we won't have any issues when it comes to distortion of the dress at all but I'm gonna to have to do some mock-ups to really figure out how I'm gonna make this work because this is my first time doing an uh, interlacing of this magnitude with the waist reduction. Um, this picture just shows you that the top is gonna to have lace. We're gonna have, uh, I'm gonna take off some of the trim and I'm gonna reapplicate it onto the sleeves here, but this is going to be pretty much the lace fabric in itself. I'm planning on using the lace fabric. I may have to- Mommy. Sit sit that chair. I may have to um, have this as tool, like black tool, and then applique the the appliques back onto it with the trim. But we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna make a full mock up 
on this, guys. I'm not going to just draft it and make it. No, I'm going to make a full mock-up to make sure it works. There will also be a waist stay here, up and up underneath here, which will close with a hook and eye. And I'm doing that because there's a two inch waist reduction, which um, makes the waistline seem a little bit weak. So I will actually um, uh, be having a waist stay here. And I'm thinking about having this as two layers, two layers of interfaced cotton. Um, and I will put those layers together and then add the um, create bony channels um, in between the layers instead of um, sewing, like boning onto it. Now I'm trying to figure out whether I want to use steel boning or wriggling boning. Now, if this didn't have such a large waist reduction, then I would use wriggling bone. But I'm thinking since we're this, this waistline is gonna be over a lot of stress, I may use quarter inch um, spiral steel boning just to make sure that it's not as heavy as if I were to use half inch, but it still has the strength of that steel boning. And then on the back where the between the grommets where the lacing will be, I will probably use um, straight steel boning and up on the center front seam as well. And as far as the bottom of this goes, I know that once I do princess seams here on the main skirt, that is going to distort, uh oh, sorry. It's going to distort um, the trim here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of the trim off the bottom and then reapplique it on to uh, the bottom of the dress after all the seams are sewn. Um, as far as the back goes, I'm going to leave an opening um, at my side seam. I'm sorry, my son's on the table too. I'm going to leave an opening here at the side seam. Amari, I'm going to leave an opening here at the side seam so that I can pull through the back of the structure layer out. Um, yeah, out of the inside so that it can lace up independently of the back of the back of the dress. And then the back of the dress will just zip up, up over this. So the back of the dress would be our regular without the waist reduction. And then um, we'll have this corset layer that will really sit you in from the inside. Um, so I'm really going to have to get a really good zipper to make sure that um, my zipper doesn't break on me. Now, as far as the um, overskirt goes, I'm going to use satin and I'm going to have on the inside, I'm going to have a two inch self facing. So there will be two extra inches here that will be um, turned inside and then stitched um, stitch down to the lining of the, this skirt. So pretty much when it flaps open, you won't see the lining right away. There will be a facing to make it nice and pretty. And then I'm also going to have two, uh, two inch, that's what size I stock here in my, my studio. I'm gonna have a two inch horse hair up in here that's hidden in between the satin layer and its lining. Um. Now that I figured out how I'm going to construct this, and I'm still going to write uh, more step-by-step -step instructions on this before I start making it, but I wanna get to figuring out how much fabric that I'm going to need to make this dress. Now, since I make these types of silhouettes all the time, I know that six yards of fabric will make the base layer of this gown. So I'm going to write satin, six yards. Yeah. Satin, six yards. I'm going to um, need some interfacing to interface this top layer. You could also, um, instead of interfacing it, you could underline it. But I think I'm going to save a little bit of time uh, with this. Since I'm going to do a lot of hand finishes on this dress, I'm going to save some time uh, from underlining and I'm going to actually just interface it. So I'm going to interface down to where the end of the corset stops but I'm interfacing the main layer. And the reason why I'm interfacing it is because I want to add padding between the bones here of the corset and the outer layer. I don't want to see the impressions of the bones. Yes. So I think I'm going to get, um, I would say, this would probably take around four yards of interfacing. And you probably will have some left over. 
which is never a bad thing, right? Okay, so that is my main layer and uh, the interfacing that goes along with it. I'm also going to need, um, for my overlay, let's say this bodice here, each sleeve I'm gonna allot, um, I'm gonna allot one yard for two sleeves. You want this one? Okay. Sorry guys, I got Captain Crazy, AKA birthday boy here on the on the table with me. Um, I'm gonna allot one, uh, one yard for the sleeves and then a half a yard for the bodice front and a half a yard for the bodice back. So that in total, let's gonna say we need two yards here of lace, two yards of lace for the bodice. And for the skirt, we're probably going to need about, I'm gonna allocate, hmm. I usually, it usually takes about four yards to do the bottom of a mermaid skirt, but since I'm using lace and I'm gonna be doing applique seams, I'm gonna add another two yards. So I'm gonna say that we need around eight yards total of lace. And it's always good to get extra lace because you're gonna need as much lace as you can for all the trim that we're doing around the, the dress. And the lace that I'm using is, I'll probably insert something up over here, is um, has the trim on both sides. So when you order eight oh, yards yeah. of lace, you really get about 16 oh, yeah. yards of the trim. Okay, so that takes care of our base layer with its interfacing and that takes care of our um, lace overlay as well. I'm also going to throw in two yards of tulle just because I may need to uh, create my sleeves from tulle or um, have like two layers of, of tulle somewhere to add strength. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put tulle, two yards. Now let's get in down to the meat of the dress, our structure layer. Now I wanna make sure that our structure layer is robust because we're doing two, yard, uh, two inches of reduction around the whole circumference of our waist. But I do want to make sure that it is thin enough to where it's not making our neckline super bulgy because I cannot stand that. Okay, so for our structure layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to find a really thin cotton, maybe something thinner than muslin. I'm probably gonna end up using muslin, y'all, because that's what I have here already. So yes, yeah, so let's, just, let's just account for using muslin. I'm gonna use two layers of muslin, two interface layers of muslin, and I'm also gonna make sure that when I cut this out, I'm going to cut the um, the interfacing without the seam allowances so that there, it's not bulky in the seam allowances um, when we're sewing all these layers together. Yes, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, and then for the back, since the back is coming through, the outside, I'm going to have, the back is going to have to be cut from the same satin that we're using um, for our lining. Should we do that? Yes. So I'm gonna cut the back pieces, the front pieces from muslin because they will be hidden. And the back, the back pieces here are gonna be cut from a satin because we're gonna see this. So this needs to be, um, this will be two layers as well, but um, it'll be satin and then lining. Stop, Mari. For these back pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna say for this muslin, I need muslin one yard should do this. And when I say one yard, that's because I'm buying um, 120 inch width um, muslin. If you're getting like a 45 or something, then you're gonna need to compensate for the the shorter width of the fabric. If you got, if you can only find 45, then I would get like maybe three yards just to be safe. Here, um, for our satin and lining, I'm going to need, I would allot one yard extra of satin. So I'll change this to seven. And um, I'm gonna add another two yards of interfacing. Because it's just me interfacing. Um, two yards of interfacing. That interfacing should cover this bit and it should cover this bit as well. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna go with the grommets and stuff yet. I'm mean, gonna we're gonna do notions after we finish all of everything that we need for our fabric. Okay.
Now that we've done pretty much everything, the last thing to do is our lining. And I'm just, since I have seven yards of the main fabric, I'm just gonna go ahead and get um, lining seven yards. And I usually use satin for my lining, but I want to go and find something a little bit thinner. I'm actually gonna use actual lining fabric. I wanna see what Joanne's has when I go. Um, we'll see what they have up in there. Okay, now that I have the main gown taken care of, now let's go ahead and turn our attention to our overskirt. Um, I already have the fabric for it, and I think it was like a four or five yard cut. So I'm just gonna be safe and say five yards of satin. So an additional five yards of satin. Yes. And that should take care of all of our fabric that we need. Uh, right now, I don't have any plan for adding lace embellishments to the satin overskirt, just because I don't know if I have um, enough lace for it. But if I do have enough lace for it, then we will go ahead and do it. And all of that will be hand sewn instead of glued, uh, because I've noticed that when you use the Gouda Bin glue, um, I got it somewhere. When you use the Gouda Bin glue on black fabric, no, no, it's a no, no. So everything will be hands on. Say hi to the birthday boy. No, they see you. Say today's my birthday. Never naughty, always nice. That shirt's such a lie. He is two today. I can't believe he's two already. I feel like I literally just had him and now he's two. It's crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've got all of our fabric sorted out. Now let's go through here and figure out um, our notions. So I'm going to start from the bottom up. I want to have two inch horse hair here. So I'm going to say that I need two inch horse hair. And I, when I buy horse hair, I never just buy it by the yard. I always buy it by the 50, it comes uh, 50 yard um, lots. And I always buy, buy it by the lot. And I already have two lots of that in there. So I'm not gonna, well, I guess for you guys, I would say get one 50 yard bolt of the horse hair. Um, I always, well, lately I've been putting half inch horse hair or they sometimes call it soft wriggly boning, but it's horse hair that's like half inch wide. I usually stabilize my necklines and all of my biases um, around the neckline and the arm holds with that. But I'm kind of reluctant, reluctant to do that since we're gonna have all of these corseted layers in here. I'm going to get it anyway. Um, uh, two or three yards will do. I have my pattern. I have it. Um, two, yeah, two or three yards will do because it's just a neckline. Horse hair. I hope you guys don't find this video boring. I just she wanted you guys that. to see my exact yeah. thought process. Yeah. My, yes, baby. My whole workflow for how yeah. I create gowns. And I wanted you guys to see it in the pace that I should be making these gowns at and not super fast, like fast fashion. We're not we're not fast fashion here. This is, we're a couture house, right? <laughs> anyway, okay, so we got our horse hair taken care of. Now we need to figure out how are we putting our detachable um, train on? Because I know for a fact, I don't want to have like a waistband thing here. I can't stand that. I want it to kind of just be floating. So I'm thinking snaps. So, okay, move this. I'm gonna say one pack of snaps. And if you can get the snaps in black, that'll be perfect. I think sometimes they come in silver. So you can just get some black paint. Or if you're making a white version of this dress, get some white paint and just paint it so that it can be kind of hidden. Um, so yes, yeah, so snaps, I'm gonna get one pack of snaps to fasten our train on here. I'm also looking here, I need so some I ribbon, some grow grain ribbon. You could also use like a, um, I think it's called twill tape or any of that kind of strong-ish kind of um, one inch, maybe five eighths of an inch ribbon here for our waist stay. 
to finish off our waist day in the back, I need a skirt, hook, and eye. And then for our loops here, not loops, for our corset here, I'm going to need some grommets. I'm also going to need some lacing. I'm going to see if I can find some quarter inch satin ribbon in black. I think that'll be pretty nicely quarter inch or eighth of inch. Um, I'm not sure if they have eighth of an inch ribbon. That would be nice if they did. Um, okay, so that takes care of the horse hair here. We're not putting horse hair in the main satin layer. Um, I'm thinking about maybe building a petticoat for up underneath the main dress, but I'm not 100% sold on that because I don't want to have like a, a crap ton of volume up underneath there. Um, for the corset, we're going to need um, quarter inch spirals, still bony. We're also going to need quarter, I don't, I'm not sure if it comes in quarter inch, I'm going to say half inch um, regular steel boning. And before I get comments saying that, oh, um, spiral steel boning is heavy, blah, 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 I understand this, but when you're creating a dress that has a waist with two introduction, you want that spiral steel boning, that wriggling boning is not going to hold the shape of your corset. Okay? All right. Um... In between my layers, I like to add cups. And since I'm making this in my size, I'm going to say one pair of D sew in cups. And I actually like the ones that Joann's have, surprisingly. So that's probably where I will get those cups from. Okay, so we got our cups, we got our boning. Uh, obviously, you need matching thread. Okay. Yeah. Um, no. Let's see. Let's see. What else do we need? I, uh, since our sleeves are going to be super tight, we may, we may add some buttons here. So let's just get some buttons. Or you can cover your own buttons here. Um, and button loop. I'm going to call it button looping. Because we, um, our sleeves are going to be so tight, you want to be able to get your hand in them. So they're going to be closed with buttons, probably on the inside, or maybe even on the side here. Um, closed with buttons. We're going to need a zipper. And I don't know if I'm going to do buttons on the back. I'm getting so tired of invisible zippers, y'all. I'm thinking about switching over to um, putting some lap zippers in the back of my dresses with regular zippers. Just because I feel like um, the invisible zippers are not strong enough to hold these kinds of gowns that um, are tight fitting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cost this dress. And I know I always uh, get questions and I did a story about how I determined the cost of my dresses. As much I would charge someone to go ahead and make this dress for them. So... Um, I usually buy all the same materials all the time, so I'm pretty sure I know how much each of this costs. So I'm just going to mark it over here. And actually on my computer, I have a, um, a spreadsheet that all I have to do is um, put in the amount of yards that I need of each thing and it calculates the amount for me, but I will do it manually for you guys. So the satin usually runs when it's not on sale, $12.99 a yard. Uh, interfacing. I don't know how much interfacing costs. Yeah, for now, just pick it up. Where's my receipt? Um, let's call interfacing ten dollars a yard, even though I'm sure it's not that much. Lace. This lace that I have here is like eighty dollars a yard. I think. Let me check. Okay, sorry. Okay, so when it's not on sale, it's $112 a yard. And the reason why I'm using the not on sale prices is because you never know when your customer is going to pay and that sale may be over. So don't give them a sale price. Give them the price that it is regular. And then um, if they just so happen to pay when the sale is still going on, then you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna, I can give you a 10% discount or whatever you want to work. Or don't give them a discount. It just depends all on you. 
Um, tool. This uh, I know the tool that I like is ten dollars per yard. Um, so ten dollars. Muslin. <coughs> Is twelve ninety nine a yard when it's not on sale. Um, the one hundred and twenty width lining fabric. I don't know what fabric I'm gonna use for lining yet, so I'm gonna say lining. And I know my lining is not gonna cost more than my face layer, so I'm gonna put the same amount. Twelve ninety nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all this up. So I'm gonna multiply the satin by twelve, the interfacing by six, all about all that good stuff, and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay. So just the fabric alone to make this dress is going is costing me thirteen hundred and two dollars and thirty five cents. Yes. So when your client comes to tell you that she wants you to make a whole wedding dress for her for eight hundred dollars, you show her this and tell her that it's not possible. But anyway, a way to make this cheaper. Obviously, we're using a lot of fabrics and there's a lot of layers here. Um, but the main cost is the lace fabric, which is fully justified. It's a beaded lace, and most lace costs around a hundred something dollars per yard. So if they want a dress that is full lace, let them know that the cost of the lace will greatly affect the cost of their gown. Now, if your client's budget is a little bit smaller, um, a way, a good way to offset the cost of the lace would be to do the entire overlay in tulle and not lace and then um see if you can purchase some lace trim by the yard which lace to love does all of their fabric that they sell like full lace um fabric they also um most of the time yeah. sell that same lace as trim and its own um, already cut out appliques so you don't have to buy the full sheet of lace like i have here and that will cut the cost a lot um, well it, actually it just depends because if you're doing the um, if you if you wanted to cut the cost of this down maybe sacrifice the lace here the lace trim here don't do it here and just have the lace trim at the top so you only have to buy like two yards of the lace trim and that would save you greatly on the cost but I just want to show you guys the cost of what I'm making today so that you guys can understand um, how much things really do cost to make because this you know it's crazy um these gowns especially when you get into gowns that aren't um slimmer in shape like to be honest the main reason why i make mermaid gowns all the time is because they're a lot cheaper to make than a ball gown um you know my last uh that red ball gown that i made took over 30 yards of tool and that tool was three meters wide and it took over 30 yards of it the tool alone was almost four hundred dollars um so yeah yeah so the fabrics for this dress are thirteen hundred and thirty five dollars that doesn't include all of this now usually i have um on my spreadsheet i have a thing called um notions so it's just a section called notions and it's $200. Notions will usually cover the zipper, the buttons, the button looping, the thread, the cups, the horse hair, snaps, ribbon. Let's see. Yeah, hook and eyes will be covered. The grommets um, will be covered in that. The ribbon will be as well. The only thing that's not covered in the $200 notion fee would be, well, not really a fee, but the, the cost of the notions would be the boning. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and add my $200 for my notions. And then another $100 for boning. And that's probably overdoing it. Um, probably more around the lines of 60 bucks for the boning. I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to balance a baby and, and uh, do this at the same time. Oh, okay, so now let's add all of this up. So the total cost to make this gown, all the notions, excluding labor, would be $1,562.35. Now, what I like to do is I take this, whatever this amount is, and I times that by 1.25, which is 25%. 
Now, the reason why I'm marking up all of this is because I spent my time um, going back and forth to the store, looking for these fabrics, searching for the fabrics online. I paid for shipping. I, um, I brought the fabric home. I processed it, whether that be pre-washing it. I had to iron it out. I had to do whatever I had to do to get the fabric ready that didn't it and um, that wasn't the construction of the dress that involved the fabrics. That's why I marked this up. So let me go ahead and calculate this and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, all of my materials and everything with my markup comes out to $1,952.93. So that's how much I'm charging my customer for materials. That's just materials. $1,952.93, okay? And my profit from that will be this less that. So um, we'll calculate profit after. Now when I'm examining this dress, I'm trying to figure out uh, how much labor is it actually going to take me to make this dress? Is this a more complicated design? Is this a rather simple design? And honestly, this is a rather simple design. There is some handwork here um, and the inner corset, but that just comes with the territory. So to make this dress, I would charge Amanda's Bridal Couture as their seamstress, even though it's just me, but I would charge um, $450 to construct this dress. So the, um, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I would charge $450 to construct this dress. Now I also take my $450 and I multiply that by 1.25, which is the 25%. Now the reason why I'm marking my labor up is because I'm paying, I want to pay myself this as, let's just say, Amanda Sprider Couture's employee, their seamstress. I want to charge, I mean, I want this to be mine. But Amanda Sprider Couture still needs to make money off the labor. So I mark my labor up and let me go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so I just went ahead and did all the rest of the math off camera. So um, I just wanted to re reiterate what I'm doing here. This is the cost of material cost of material with the markup plus mark up this is cost of labor plus markup and this is um, the total amount so this is what your customer will pay for this gown your customer will pay $2515.43 for this wedding dress which is actually a really good price for a wedding dress um, because pretty, <clears throat> which is actually a pretty good price for a wedding dress. You're getting two wedding dresses in one for twenty five hundred dollars. Come on now, you can't get that from Kleinfeld. But anyway, um, and this is custom to your size with the built-in corset. But I don't have to sell myself, right? <laughs> anyway, so our business profit would be five hundred and three dollars and eight cents. Well, obviously, um, before I take my cut out of it, your business would profit whatever these two combined are is so I'm like 900 what is that 953 dollars so yeah our total business profit would be like 953 dollars and eight cents but i pay myself my fair share 450 dollars so my business at the end of the day off of a 25 hundred dollar dress my business profits 500 dollars and i profit 450 dollars and for all of for those of you who are um owners of this kind of business as well how i pay myself is all of the dresses that i sell within the month i group all of that together so it just stays in the bank account and i group it together and then on the first of the month i pay myself all of the labor that i made for the previous month so i get paid once a month so say i make three uh, two wedding dresses then my check would be 900 dollars, and then obviously the, the business profit goes to whatever it goes to um um for the business okay it mostly goes to making these videos for y'all <laughs> to be honest but anyway so i hope that was clear guys i know i got crap all over the place and this is um a different kind of video that i usually make but i wanted to show you guys my thought process and how i break things down and this is not only for my fellow dressmakers this is also for my diy brides who are making their own dress and who are confused about where to start what kind of materials they need to buy Find, a, um, um, find three or four designs that you really like 
combine them into five or six sketches narrow down um, what you like about each sketch and put them all into one perfect dress and then call out all of the different details that you want to um, notice on the dress like here there's going to be an inner corset this top piece is going to be darted instead of princess seamed there's going to be a facing here and horse hair just all, whatever that pertains to the dress that you're making and then break it down layer by layer figuring out how much fabric you need first and then go from bottom to top and figure out all the notions that you need to make it and then cost everything so you can figure out how much your dress is going to cost you to make so if you guys have any more questions please leave those comments down um, in the comment section below and before i go i wanted to show you guys I will be drafting this pattern from paper. I won't be doing any draping, and I'll be using my standard 16 bodice block. So I'll be making this dress in a standard size 16, and I'll be showing you guys how I apply alterations to a standard bodice block so that it can fit me a little bit better because it is my measurements, but I'm a little bit more short-waisted than this bodice block, and there's obviously a couple, uh, couple changes because I'm not a standard mannequin right okay. so um yeah. and i also am working on okay. getting these uh standard bodice blocks graded uh, yeah. you can okay. see i'm trying i'm, tr I'm learning how to grade y'all so i can offer these um i can offer these to you guys these would be totally free um i'll have them from size 2 yeah. to size 20 i'm yeah. still grading so uh, hopefully by the time um this video the drafting part of this video um or the series gets up on my channel I'll have all of them um, drafted graded in Illustrator and ready for instant download um, so doing that may make this video take a um, this series take a little bit longer but I really want to make sure that you guys have a good starting place here and if you're not wanting to get a standard bodice block if you want to draft custom bodice blocks for your individual bus size, your cup size, then I do have a course that shows you how to draft a custom bodice block, and it is $35 on sale now. The sale will end January 1st, so make sure to go ahead and check that course out. It will be below in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate you guys more than you know, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Take it all back, hate the things that you said.